Right now at 6, local, state, and federal authorities are getting involved after an online video and flyer target the Baraboo community following a controversial prom photo. And we get an inside look at one of the state's crime labs responsible for processing some of the evidence collected in the search for missing Wisconsin teen Jamie Kloss. And watch good old St. Nick spread a little holiday cheer to some area children in the hospital. That's tonight on News 3 at 6. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us. Local and federal authorities are investigating an anti-Semitic video satirizing Baraboo's controversial prom photo. Jamie Perez joins us live in Baraboo with more details surrounding the issue. Jamie? That's right. Well, that video was actually posted on Monday and has since been removed. But this morning it had about 1800 views. And as, as you mentioned, that it uh, was promoting really hateful and anti-Semitic messages. And also on Monday, there were flyers that were posted to the outside of the Jack Young Middle School here that were also promoting some anti-Semitic and hateful messages. Those flyers have since been removed and police have opened a criminal investigation following these instances. Now, both the video and the flyers warned people to stay home on December 18th, which was actually a day scheduled for education and presentations to foster a better community in response to the publicity over those contra over that controversial Baraboo photo. Police are reviewing school security cameras to have any leads on who posted those flyers. Now, police say they are working to find the source of both the video and the flyers. They say they hope this doesn't disrupt the healing process. The events on December 18th were designed to foster following that controversial photo. Now, the school district and police are not making any comments at this time as that investigation is ongoing, but we will be sure to provide you with more information as it becomes available to us. Back to you. Thank you, Jamie. We'll check back in with you tonight on News 3 at 10. It has been nearly two months now since 13-year-old Jamie Kloss went missing. Police were called to her parents' home in Barron to find her parents fatally shot. Investigators believe Jamie was abducted. One of Wisconsin's crime scene response units was on the scene within hours. Madison State Crime Lab has handled the bulk of the forensics in the Kloss case. State law prevents them from sharing specifics, but the Barron County Sheriff's Department confirms testing should be complete this week. Our number one priorities have to do with the very most severe public safety threats. Uh, this case would fall into that scenario. The Barron County Sheriff says more than 100 pieces of potential evidence from the Kloss home have been sent to the lab. Data entry now dominates most of the crime lab's duties so employees can develop a DNA profile. And the Barron community just held a special tree lighting ceremony in honor of Jamie. This tree includes messages from her classmates. Lanterns were also released during tonight's event. A town of Janesville woman is being forced to give up her horses, but says she's not sure she can find homes for them. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with why the town is forcing her to give them up. Adam? Well, Charlotte, Dee Dee Goldberg has been rehabilitating horses at her town of Janesville home for more than a decade. But now, thanks to an ordinance in the town, she's going to have to find homes for close to two dozen of these horses. Now, Goldberg says she has until April 1st to find homes for 23 of her horses, what she normally works to train and rehabilitate before finding permanent homes. And some of the horses she takes care of come from abusive and negligent situations, what she says them, what she says makes them extremely difficult to just give away. Rescues across the country are full. The need is far outstrips what we can do. All of us together, there are 100,000 horses every year that go to slaughter. So it's not like you could just call up and say, hey, can you take some horses? And especially horses that the population we have right now is pretty needy. Now, Goldberg says in 2012, she had the blessing of the town to run her farm and isn't sure what prompted them to change their minds years later. And now I made contact with each of the five board members of the town of Janesville Town Board, but did not hear back from any of them. In Rock County, reporting live, Adam Duxter. Adam, thank you. Turning to weather, a little slippery start to the day. Roads looking much better tonight. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us on the patio. Gary? Yeah, most areas, the, the roads are okay, and I think the main roads will remain that way, but there is the potential for some freezing drizzle, especially east of Madison, heading toward Milwaukee. Winter weather advisory is in effect until midnight for Dodge, Jefferson, and Walworth counties, as well as eastward toward Milwaukee. There have been some reports of freezing drizzle there. Again, the main road's probably in pretty good shape, but there's the secondary road, side streets, and sidewalks that could get a little slippery at 
at times. On Doppler track, you can see if there is freezing drizzle, it's not being detected very well by radar, uh, being very light. But there are areas of fog. In fact, visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in Juneau and Dodge County. Here in Madison, visibility is at about three miles. And that, coupled with temperatures that are slightly below freezing, means that uh, we could see some freezing drizzle at times. Wind chills right now, not much of a factor thanks to the light winds, but that's also contributing to the fog. By tomorrow morning, temperatures should be in the upper 20s. We'll see some areas of fog uh, through early morning, and then we'll just see cloudy skies for much of the day. A slight chance of light rain, maybe mix a little snow late in the afternoon. High temperature at 38. That's your first alert forecast. Thank you, Gary. Stores across the United States and Canada are pulling some Kotex tampons off the shelves. Wisconsin's Kimberly Clark issued the recall on the regular absorbency U by Kotex Sleek. Some women say part of the product unraveled inside their bodies during the removal. Wisconsin Governor-elect Tony Evers taking part in a statewide budget listening tour, and today he stopped in Wausau. Today's stop featured three different groups with members focusing on health care, energy and the environment and criminal justice reform. President Trump, by the way, expected to sign a massive five-year farm bill that has now cleared both the House and Senate. Our Rose Schmidt is here to share how it could impact dairy farmers here in Wisconsin, Rose. That's right. A member of the Edge Dairy Farmer Cooperative tells me the farm bill could give farmers some certainty at a time when Wisconsin is losing hundreds of dairy farms every year. The farm bill would give farmers the option to, tr to buy a type of insurance product that would help compensate for low milk and commodity prices. The Dairy Cooperative says the proposal would help make the risk management program cheaper and allow farmers to enroll in multiple programs at the same time. Now what this farm bill does again try to do is uh, help where it can with better access to foreign markets, better access to domestic markets, boosting demand uh, where it can for farm products, and also um, by trying to provide farmers a safety net. But again, those aren't, those aren't handouts, those are insurance products that farmers buy into. The measure passed overwhelmingly in both houses. U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin pushed for it, but Senator Ron Johnson and Representative Ron Kine both voted against it because it would allow distant family members to qualify for the insurance products, not just the farmers themselves. The Farm Bill would also make it legal to grow industrial hemp across the country. Now, Wisconsin legalized hemp last year, but farmers say it could break down some barriers and make it easier for them to do business across a broader area. All right, Rose Schmidt reporting that. Rose, thank you. State wildlife officials have recorded another firearm-related injury stemming from the nine-day gun deer season. They didn't indicate a location of this incident. DNR officials initially announced three injuries in Columbia, Dunn, and Sauk counties, the fewest injuries in the history of the nine-day hunt. Madison City leaders are seeking your input on a new bus rapid transit system. There is a meeting going on right now at the Madison Central Library. The entire reason behind the new bus system is to meet the needs of the city's growing population and transportation demands. The proposed bus would complement the existing Metro bus system. These new buses would include Wi-Fi and better technology on board. The meeting tonight is to get the public involved and make sure future plans include public needs and priorities. The city of Madison is replacing old street signals with ones that are safer for people who struggle with their eyesight. Yellow lights are flashing. The newest accessible pedestrian signal is going up at the corner of Livingston and Williamson Streets. It works like a regular crossing signal, but it also includes devices to help people with vision problems find the button to change the crossing signal and play an audio message to let them know when the signal has switched and it is safe to cross. Parts of the Madison bike path are closing this week. Crews are working to remove trees along the southwest commuter path between Commonwealth Avenue and the Beltline right now. And for a list of days and areas closed, you simply visit our website, channel3000.com. And there is a reminder from the city of Madison that property tax bills will be in the mail soon. After the most recent round of assessments this year, property values went up by an average of 7% across the city. Some homeowners saw their assessments increase by as much as 14%. Tax payments have to be postmarked on or before December 31st in order to be processed as paid for 2018. Property taxes can also be paid online or over the phone. You can typically find him at one of the malls in town, but today Santa visited the kids at American Family Children's Hospital. Santa went floor to floor visiting kids too sick to leave their rooms. He also held a special event in the hospital lobby for those feeling up to it. Organizers say it is a blessing to help the kids out. It means a lot to be able to, to give the kids um, something even just to distract them for a little while and put a smile on their face and they get to see Santa and they love watching him get off the fire truck and it's, it's just a real special, part of their day. 
The event is put on by Madison Firefighters Local 311. It's something the group has done for the past 58 years. A Wisconsin family is giving back this holiday season through a special light show. And a special program making a big impact on area high schoolers. They're all 11th graders this year and they're taking all college courses. How it's helping these students get a jump start on careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. That's next at 6. Welcome back. The average age of some of the students at Madison College is getting a little younger. There are a handful of teens completing their high school degree while earning college credit. Our Keely Arthur has the details on this new program. I'm outside of Madison College right now, but step inside and you'll find some high school students. Are you squaring just the top? Victoria Greer is in high school. Let me go back to number one. And by the time she graduates in 2020, right there. She'll not only have earned a high school diploma, but enough college credits for an associate's degree in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, too. For us, it's a game changer. Now it's a dual enrollment program called STEM Academy, where 26 Madison Metropolitan School District juniors, it's 12. No. including Victoria, are taking their classes at Madison College and will do so through their senior year. I really enjoy this program. They're all 11th graders this year, and they're taking all college courses. Meaning they could enter into college as a junior in college when they graduate high school. Change X and Y. One of the best parts, it's free of charge. The Madison Metropolitan School District is paying for these students to attend here. I feel like I'm saving my, me and my family a lot of money by being able to come here and take classes while I'm still in high school. The district says they are aware of what this gift means and takes a special focus on students of color or low income when looking at applicants. To ensure that our students uh, that may not be able to afford college are able to take advantage of this opportunity. Giving all sorts of Madison teens a springboard to reach big things ahead. Negative seven minus one. The program size will nearly quadruple by the fall of 2019 with 100 students taking part. In its first year, Victoria says she's proud to be a part of it. For me, it's um, a better experience than I had in high school. And someday this program may be open to more than just Madison students. Madison College says they're talking to other area districts right now. In Madison Keeley, Arthur, WISC News 3.
In order to qualify, students must have a high GPA and an attendance rate of at least 90%. All right, fog a threat for us tonight across southern Wisconsin. And a Wisconsin family is using a festive light show to show the true meaning of Christmas. The good they're doing for their community, next at 6. A Walworth Family's Light Show is doing some good this holiday season. It's helping transform a church in Elkhorn. There is no more joy than when you hit play, when you press play, and, and the show starts and you see the lights and you see how magical and what the lights can do. That's J.T. Worley. He turns his house into a musically themed, uh, timed light show every year. A car salesman loved it, wanted J.T. to deck out his dealership with these festive lights. Instead of payment, J.T. asked him to donate the labor cost to his church that's trying to pay off $25,000 in repairs, including electrical equipment damage and a lightning strike over the summer. The car dealership agreed to pay the entire bill. That's impressive that stuff. Is. That is. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now with a look at our forecast. Hi, Gary. Hi. Uh, things pretty quiet out there for most areas. If you're heading east of Madison toward Milwaukee, though, there have been some reports of freezing drizzle. There is a uh, winter weather advisory in effect until midnight for Dodge and Jefferson counties, as well as uh, Walworth County, as uh, the threat for freezing drizzle gradually shifts farther to the east. Now, there's some fog, and temperatures are a little bit below freezing. Notice on Doppler track, if there's any precipitation, it's very light. Uh, freezing drizzle just isn't picked up that well by radar. But visibility, certainly you can see the fog. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Juneau, uh, generally about one to two miles north of Madison and about three to five miles from Madison southward. But uh, temperatures right now generally slightly below freezing. The uh, time lapse from the Edgewater Sky Cam shows uh, some a little burst of snow uh, about uh, six o'clock this morning. But it was a very quick burst of snow moved on through, and then we just had cloudy skies for the rest of the day. As we look at current temperatures, you can see, uh, like I say, temperatures just slightly below freezing. 31 Madison, 29 in Waterloo, 29 in Juneau. So it gives you an idea that if there is a little drizzle, it'll be in the form of freezing drizzle. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. 
a.m. in downtown Madison. You can make out a little bit of fog in the uh, lights of the Capitol. High today, 35 degrees after starting out at 27, but right now we're at 31. Skies are mostly cloudy. The air is calm, so no wind chill to speak of. Uh, the fog is thickest in central Wisconsin, where many locations reporting visibilities around a mile from Eau Claire over toward Green Bay. And again, some pockets of thicker fog. The far southern parts of the state, a uh, little more of a difference between the temperature and the dew point, so uh, the fog a little thinner there. Temperatures are in the lower 30s through much of the state, uh, a few places in the upper 20s. These temperatures will actually drop off just a little bit this evening. Uh, weather track shows upper level winds from the northwest, but with time, those winds become westerly and southwesterly, so we're going to see another shot of milder air. In fact, a cold front has come through and sagged to the south, but notice that front becomes stationary and then turns into a warm front out to the west, so that milder air will start to head back in our direction. Temperatures right now, 20s and 30s here. On the other side of that front, mainly 40s. Uh, we'll probably be up around 40 by the weekend. Future track shows uh, the clouds continuing for tonight along with some uh, freezing drizzle and fog. Tomorrow will stay cloudy through the day. And then the next weather system comes in. Maybe a little bit of light rain mixed with snow late tomorrow afternoon. Uh, changing to light snow and maybe a little bit of light freezing rain tomorrow night. But then after that, notice the clear skies out to the west that extend back through the Dakotas. That's the nice weather that's on the way for the weekend. So a winter weather advisory in effect until midnight for areas east of Dane County. Look for a low of 26 tonight with fog and perhaps some patchy freezing drizzle. Tomorrow look for a high of 38 degrees. Degrees, so any icy roads should melt pretty quickly, a uh, little milder, and a chance for some light rain or mixed with snow late in the day. Future track, pretty quiet overnight other than the clouds and the freezing drizzle. Tomorrow, look for cloudy skies for much of the day. Here comes the rain late in the afternoon, just kind of sideswiping us. There might be a little snow on the northern edge of that, perhaps mixed with a little freezing rain. And then by Friday, we're back to partly sunny skies and temperatures that will eventually reach the upper 30s. As we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, temperatures above normal. In fact, up around 40 on Saturday, 38 on Sunday. Much of Next week looking very quiet. Some uh, flurries Wednesday and Thursday and some light snow by Saturday of the following weekend. Guess who's back as a college football head coach? Yeah, Gary Anderson. He's back at Utah State. He says he's there for good. Again, stories coming up in sports. Hi, I'm Michelle Carolla. Tonight on the News at 9, a new proposal in response to neighbor complaints about the Edgewood College Stadium lights. We're going to break that down for you. It's all first on Fox at 9.
There's basketball at the Kohl Center tonight. The Wisconsin women's basketball team faces Chicago State. That's 0 and 8 Chicago State. They'll tip just after 7. Tomorrow night at 7, the Badger men play Savannah State. That's a Savannah State team that lost at South Dakota State last night, 139 to 72. It was 90 to 33 at halftime. Now the Badgers are averaging 9.2 turnovers a game, but last uh, Saturday against Marquette, they turned it over a season high 13 times. Dimitri Trice says they're working hard not to let that happen again. Uh, that's just something that we harp on. We try to limit our turnovers under 10 each game, and when we get over 10 and up in that range, then um, it kind of hinders the rest of our game, um, whether that's on the defensive end because it gives them more transition points, um, transition runouts, um, and then it just uh, uh, hinders us from scoring the ball. So um, it's definitely something that we harp on and we look over in film. Four Badger volleyball players are named to the Coaches Association All-America team, including sophomore Dana Redke, who makes the first team for the second year in a row. Sydney Hilly, Madison Duello, and Tiffany Clark also recognized today. The Bucks showed off their latest throwback uniforms today. There are variations of the look from the late 70s to the early 90s when they had some really good teams featuring Sidney Moncrief, Marcus Johnson, and Jack Sigma. The Bucks will wear those uniforms on Christmas Day when they play the Knicks in New York. Friday night, we were hoping to have a battle of two of the state's top girls basketball players when Madison Memorial played Verona on the Prep Media Game of the Week, but Memorial's Lilani Kapanis announced last night she has a torn ACL, she'll have surgery, and miss the rest of the season. That stinks, but the game will go on. Friday night, our first Prep Mania Game of the Week in our winter schedule, it's Madison Memorial at Verona Girls Basketball on Channel3000.com, live Friday night, 7.15 p.m. Badger running back Jonathan Taylor, a unanimous selection to the first team of the American football coaches all-America team. Bo Benshaw also on the first team. Michael Dieter makes the second team. Two weeks from tomorrow, the Badgers will play the Pinstripe Bowl against Miami at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, it's not a warm weather site, but it is a unique venue, and from what people say, it's a first-class bowl experience. For Taylor, the Salem, New Jersey native, it's a chance to play in front of friends and family. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, I'll have a lot of family and friends there. Uh, the closest we played in so far was uh, Penn State, so Definitely to get another opportunity to come out and watch me. It should be a fun experience. Um, I think it'll be one of those experiences that is more exciting when you get there. I think guys are excited, but it is more exciting when you actually get there. I feel like when I was there, we kind of got to travel around, walk around. It made you feel like, you know, Santa Claus was real or something. Former Badger football coach Gary Anderson is a head coach again. Anderson is back at Utah State. That's where he was before he came to Wisconsin in 2013. He, of course, left suddenly to go to Oregon State two years later. Now he's back at Utah State. I don't have plans to go jump here and go coach there and go do this. This is, uh, I would love to stay somewhere for a long period of time and build a team that is a consistent winner. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, <laughs> right. shame on me. He has no plans to leave. I've heard that. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. Final check with Gary. Uh, we do have a winter weather advisory for areas east of Dane County, including Jefferson and Dodge County, for some freezing drizzle. That runs until midnight tonight, so be aware if you're out driving. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.